It's a story about food, not just any food, but fabulous French food. All over the world, it is said, people eat to live, but only in France do they live to eat. This is also a story about a great French chef, one of the greatest. They called him the people chef because he reached out to everyone, rich and poor. He was a man of huge ambition, but sadly, he was also a man who had fallen into deep despair. His name was Bernard Loiseau, and his face was familiar all over France. Bernard was always on television, always talking about food and eating. He loved the limelight, loved being a celebrity, and the French, in turn, idolized him. He was that rare creature a three-star chef. The British have their royalty. The Americans have their movie stars. The French have their chefs. Can you try to explain to an American what it means to be a great chef in France? If you are a great chef, a chef, everybody knows you. The president, the taxi driver, everybody. You are, it's a star in France to be a famous chef. And Bernard was the most popular chef in France. Everybody knew him. Was he a great chef? Of course. Of course. Dominique Loiseau was a journalist in Paris before she married Bernard in 1989. She gave up her career to help her husband achieve his life's dream, winning three stars from the Michelin Guide, the highest honor bestowed on any European chef. At 15, he decided to have three stars. And that was, I think, an obsession for him. His obsession since 15 was as a third star. And when he got it, he wanted to keep it. He got it 12 years ago, the story that made the front page of the New York Times and has kept it ever since. What was it like the day that you got the third star? We opened the champagne in the kitchen, and so it was something for Bernard, it was something very special. And I must tell you that in the same week, we had our second child, a little boy, Bastian, and Bernard was unhappy because of this child, because it was on the wrong moment, you know what I mean? He said, why do we have this child this week? But I said, Bernard, nine months ago, we couldn't know that. So to have a son was an unwanted distraction? A little bit, yes. Mm. Yes, I must tell you, that's the truth, yeah. This was Bernal's final television appearance, his funeral earlier this year after he committed suicide. It was broadcast live on French TV. Thousands stopped what they were doing that day to watch and mourn. Many of them couldn't fathom why someone who appeared to love besides Dominique, Bernal left behind three young children. And he left behind a multi-million dollar empire, three bistros in Paris, a line of gourmet frozen food, six cookbooks, and the pride of his life, his hotel and three-star restaurant called La Côte d'Or. Go inside and you enter a magnificent manor house with beautifully manicured lawns and spectacular rooms. Located in the quaint village of Saulieu, in the country's Burgundy region, La Côte d'Or is one of only 25 restaurants in France, culinary temples really, that Michelin has awarded three stars. It's a shame to eat it so pretty. Mm -hmm. Those stars are the reason hundreds of food lovers each year make the pilgrimage here. It is in the mouth, it's so tender. For many of them, it's the meal of a lifetime. Bernard Loiseau liked to say that he was a merchant of happiness. What he meant, of course, was that he sold happiness to other people, the happiness that came along with one of his incomparable meals. But Loiseau himself was rarely happy. He suffered demons. And what he feared most was that Michelin would take away the star, that coveted third star that meant the world to him. I must tell you that two days before, I remember, he came back in the evening, it was 11 p.m. He took off his uh, vest de cuisinier and he said, no, Dominique, I'm sure. I said, you're sure about what? And he said, no, I know the press want to kill me. I said, Bernard, please. He believed the press wanted to kill him. Yes, yes, but it was really not true. 
but it was like that in his mind. A short time before Bernal committed suicide, Gomio, a French restaurant guide less influential than Michelin, lowered La Cote d'Or's rating from 19 to 17. That hurt Bernard. About the same time, a story in the French newspaper Le Figaro said that Michelin too would soon take away a star. The story wasn't true. When the guide came out, Bernard still had his three stars. He knew that, but depressed. He killed himself anyway. You never think, you never think, at this point somebody is going to kill himself for, for this. Next course is the fear of Red Mallet. Hubert Couillou is the maitre d' at La Côte d'Or. He'd worked for Bernal for more than 20 years and knew him well. And Hubert couldn't help noticing in the weeks before the suicide how depressed Bernal was. Oh, enjoy. So last week, he was so tired and so fed up everything, and he said he was just walking around in the kitchen and here, and he said, I'm not good enough. I did what I could, but I'm not good enough. I'm not uh, really good. I said, no, don't say this. You're the most known chef in France, maybe one of the most known in the world. And day after day, maybe the last week was <sighs> crazy time, crazy. What was your own reaction when Bernard was all committed to his it was um, an enormous tragedy, and it was very, very, very sad. Derek Brown is the editor-in-chief of the Michelin Guide. He's the first foreigner to hold the job. Not for nothing do they call the company Mighty Michelin. Its guidebook is considered the food bite. Win a third star for Michelin, and the world comes knocking at your door. But for a chef to keep a third star to maintain such extraordinarily high standards requires tremendous effort and is incredibly stressful. Michelin has been accused of unduly pressuring its three-star chefs. Brown denies this and says it's the chefs who pressure themselves. They are the ones that decide what level of cooking they're going to do. We have never said to anybody what they must do. We've never said, you've got to cook three-star food as of today. We, we couldn't do that. So any pressure that they have is from them or from their peer group. And we simply go along and judge what they're all doing. But there's no doubt Bernard did feel the pressure. He feared he was losing ground to younger, more adventuresome chefs. And he thought in his depressed state of mind that it was only a matter of time before Michelin would take away a star. When you think about this, just think about it in relation to other human activities. If you're a chef, in France particularly, your ambition is to get your third star. And once you have it, there's nowhere to go but down. Mm -hmm. So there must be enormous anxiety. Clearly, I mean, I mean, that's true in any walk of life. To continue to improve, indeed, because nothing stands still in this life, does it? So they put the pressure on themselves. And if somebody else comes along and does just a little bit better, and then the whole thing moves up a cold, then they've all got to go with it. He loved your food. And Bernal went with it because it was the only thing he ever wanted, to be a world-class chef to serve perfect meals every day to every person, and to be famous. Nothing else mattered. But did his food really live up to his fame? There was only one way to find out, and I invited Mort Rosenblum, a Paris-based American journalist, to write his books about food, to join me for a feast at Bernard Loiseau's. Are you going a la carte, or are you going to do a menu? Uh, let me take a look. Every morning, carefully selected provisions arrive at the back door of Bernal's restaurant. Some of them still alive. They're taken into the kitchen, manhandled, and turned into incredible delicacies. The kitchen is now under the command of Patrick Bertrand. Attention, ça bouge pas, ça. Bernal's longtime right-hand man who became head chef. He's got a tough act to follow, but judging from his asparagus, he'll be fine. Oh, oui. we. Those aren't asparagus. I think they're like fighting swords. My God. I've never seen an asparagus like that. Oh, yeah. mm. oh. oh. No, that's, that's amazing. That really is amazing. I mean, for a piece of asparagus, it's a piece of asparagus. Look at this. I mean, it's, it's a painting. And then we'll show the dressage of it's maybe Patrick's kitchen now, but the food is still prepared Bernal's way. Bernal revolutionized French cuisine by using natural juices and concentrated sauces. 
eliminating nearly all the cream and butter and egg yolks found in traditional French cooking. But taste this lobster, and you'd never guess it was missing any ingredient. Oh, yeah. Ooh. And that was Bernal's magic. There's no cream. Mm -hmm. So this is a very dietetic dish. Yes? Thank you. Mm. This is wonderful. This is very, very good. Lomazo's whole philosophy of food, start with simplicity and work on it. And that, you know, that's essentially bread. By the way, in case you're wondering what this little snack cost, with mm. wine, $250 each. You know, the people here told us that they don't just get rich people here. They a lot of mm. Oh, no. Working people will save up. Oh, absolutely. For years, the French really eat well because they spend their money on this kind of thing. This is what they, this is what they care about. Is there anything they take more seriously? I don't know. Food is what holds this country together. The sun comes up on another day at La Cote d'Or. Patrick checks out the day's deliveries to make sure they measure up to his three-star standards. Voila, avec un bébé. Inside, Madame Loiseau now runs the empire her husband created, and she gets to worry about keeping that third star. Hubert is at his station in the dining room, and perfection on a plate is being prepared in the kitchen for another happy pilgrim who will probably never forget it. And only a stone's throw away from them all is the picturesque cemetery where Bernard Loiseau, brilliant and tormented, lies buried. You're facing the future, clearly, obviously, with some sadness, but with confidence. Oh, yes. We are a lot of, uh, what we say, espérance here. Yes. Hope. Yeah. Hope, yes. Immediately after Bernard's death, we had this hope feeling, and we were going to make it let Bernard would want us to do, and we do everything for Bernard. 